Okay, shalom everyone. So good to be with you tonight again. Uh, let's continue on these 36 sessions of team building. Um, we are now at session 28, lead with a clear conscience. Lead with a clear conscience. And the scripture reading is taken from the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 8. 18. Pray for us. We are convinced that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we commit this session into your hand, help us, Lord, to open the eyes of our hearts so that we might see your truth and put it into practice, especially when come to team building. Help us, Lord, as today the topic is about leading our team with a clear conscience. Be with us today as we listen to your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. By the 36 sessions of team building, uh, as Sister Shirley just share, uh, I based on these five dysfunctions of a team. And the acronym is AFLAI, A-F-L-A-I, absent of trust, fear of conflict, lack of commitment, avoidance of responsibility, and an attention to results. Obviously, we now we at avoidance of responsibility. And the topics today is about lead with a clear conscience. As leader, we have the responsibility to lead with a clear conscience. That means always honor the Lord in our hearts, respond by faith in every situation, and be willing to walk according to the word of truth. Every time when we try to focus on a topic I use this threefold anointing of Christ. So we're going to talk about how to keep a clear conscience always as we lead a team. So I'm going to talk about prophetically is about the sincere faith and kingship is about strive for good and priesthood aspect will be about uh, nurturing a pure heart. First Peter chapter 3 verse 13 to 15, Peter said, Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your heart, honor the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, honor Him as our Lord, and always be prepared to give an answer to the, everyone who asks you for the reasons, uh, uh, the reason for the hope that we have. Uh, but we do this with gentleness and respect. First Peter three fifteen is a verse about giving an answer. That means apologetics is about when the non-believers is question. You know, sometimes the best way to evangelize is when people want to know who you truly believe. So when we lead with a clear conscience, when we honor the Lord in everything that we do, people will feel attracted by what you say and what you do. And then this is the golden opportunity to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. Paul said, Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. So we live by faith, not by sight. You see, Paul have a struggle whether it's 
whether it be absent of the body and present with the Lord, how good it is. But he knows that as long as the Lord keep him down here, he has a purpose. And his purpose is to live by faith, not by sight. So when we lead our team, there will be situations, there will be challenges or situations that might be beyond our control. But how we respond to our situations is very important. Whether you can respond by faith or fear. This afternoon, I was um, at our aquaponic center and I was exciting, got busy whole day, tried to uh, commissioning the whole system and try to make sure all the parts are together. But after testing, we find some of our bio bed is leaking. Sometimes it's just like going like a flat tire. And in that moment of time, I had the choice to respond by faith or by fear. You see how our reaction and how our mood and how our, you know, sometimes we might not be able to quite hide the emotions when we feel, wow, something go wrong, you know, and not as expected. But we can always respond by faith, not by fear. And we praise God he worked all things for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. As I look back over the months that I was building these aquaponic centers, there are so many delays the Lord has, um, you know, I couldn't understand why was the delay at a certain time, but the Lord orchestra all things for good for those who love him. So I look back, God always intended for good. So his children, you know, all what we can do is trust Him. For it is God who works in us to will and act on behalf of His good purpose. So faith is very important. Maintaining a clear conscience and an inner integrity as a leader is achieved by building our faith in the Word of God. We know our human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked, who really knows how bad it is. But you see, the Word of God is like the double-edged words. It will reveal our innermost being. Sometimes we're surprised what really deep inside the heart is. Just like Proverbs say, you know, there are many schemes in the man's mind, but on it, that's just like deep water. Sometimes we don't even realize it ourselves. But he said, only those with the insight can draw it out. People who insight be understand, be able to use the word of God and search our heart. So when Timothy was charged to oppose the false leaders, Paul says, the goal of this command is love, which come from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Can you see this triangle here? A good conscience, obviously, that is kingship. A sincere faith that is, obviously, prophetic. And then a pure heart is priesthood. And this is the positive tipping point of keeping a clear conscience. So as leaders, we can only maintain a clear conscience with the integrity of our hearts by building our faith on God's words alone. It's what Paul said, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. If we say we lack of faith, we can't respond to our situation by faith, it's because we haven't feed enough of God's words. We haven't digested enough. We don't ponder enough of God's words. So remember, God's words is very powerful. It can build faith and help us to respond by faith in every situation. Sincere faith is so important. Without faith, we know it is impossible to please God because everyone who comes to God must believe that God exists and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, 
verse 38 to 39, the writer's wrote and said, But my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrink back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. We're living in a time that darkness covers the land, thick darkness is over the people. We can only be a rise and shine and let our faith be made known to the people around us. Are we know it's all by grace that we have been saved? True faith. It is not that we can produce this effectual faith ourselves. It is purely the gift of God. It's not by work so that no one can boast. Because we are all God's workmanship and created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So true, sincere faith definitely will produce good behavior so that we can always keep a good conscience. You see, when we're talking about, uh, Paul, Paul talk about if you truly believe, if your faith is a saving faith, in an effectual faith, it always results in good works. That's why James put it nicely. He said, yeah, I think it's in chapter 2, he's talking about the integration between good works and real faith. What good it is, he said, my brothers, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you tells him, go in peace, stay warm and well fed but does not provide for his physical needs. What good is that? So too, faith by itself, it does not result in action. It's not real faith. It's actually dead. But someone will say, if you have faith and I have deeds, show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith with my deeds. That's what James says. You believe that God is one, Good for you. Even the demons believe that. That's why faith, true faith, it must always result in good works. That's why Paul told the Galatians, in Christ, neither circumcision or non-circumcision has any value. That means all our religious Frontage, you know, we can put on a false the religious facade. We might be seen so pious, but if we do not manifest this faith, Paul said the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Love is the fruit of the spirit. There means no fruit, something wrong with your faith. I think the last session we talked about when Paul defended himself before Felix. He said, as a leader, he knows he keeps his clear conscience before God and man. The conscience is an inner voice. It's an inner voice that God placed in our innermost being. And that conscience as a leader, how do we make sure that is a clear conscience? So conscience is the inner voice that God put in us, which becomes our moral judgment. It is a sin when we violate our conscience by not doing the good we ought to do or do whatever is not from faith. Paul said that in Romans chapter 14, he said, whatever is not from faith is a sin. As fallen creatures, our conscience sometimes is hardened. Many times actually is hardened. It's just like what Paul said, have been sheer 
with a hot iron. Paul said in the last days, in the last days, many will abandon the faith and follow this, this deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings only come from hypocritical liars whose conscience have been sheared as with a hot iron. So, when someone who is not truly saved, when they don't have that saving faith, they can put on all this religious false facade, but they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God and because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts, having lost all their senses, sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity. So our hearts need to be renewed by the Word of God. When we go against our conscience, we will not do what is right. James said in chapter 4, it is uh, the book of James chapter 4 verse 17 said, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, it is sin for them. That's why we got to uh, remember we, our sincere faith must result in fruits in our life. Now we come to how to keep a conscience uh, always is by not withholding good from those of whom it is due when it is in your power to act. This is the Old Testament wisdom in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 to 28. That wisdom told us, do not withhold good from those who deserve it. That means do not withhold good from those whom it is due. When it is in your power to help them, do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow. I will give it to you when you already have it with you. Many times we miss this opportunity the Lord has given us to help our neighbors. So when we is within our ability we must do, try to grasp every opportunity to do what is good. And it's a duty for us as Christians as well. Paul, when he talked about authority in the book of Romans chapter 13, he said, give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay tax. If revenue, revenue. If respect, then respect. If honour, then honour. And sometimes... You know, as we come to the end of this age, where we see so much wickedness, we see so many scam around us, we are so afraid to do good. But the scriptures told us, in the book Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, he said, let us not become weary of doing good. For at the proper times, we will reap a harvest if we do not give out. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those belong to the family of God. We must hold fast to the work of righteousness by the Spirit power and never let go to live without the reproach of our conscience. We should be like Job. You remember Job went through, he probably couldn't understand why all these disasters fall on him. But even that, he said, it is the Lord who gives and he's the one who takes away. And we look at Job's life. He held fast to his integrity in the midst of all his trials. In Job, the book of Job chapter 27 verse 6, he said, 
I will maintain my innocence and never let go of it. My conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. It's interesting to hear in chapter 27, the whole chapter, uh, I think, no, the first, first portion of that chapter, how the discourse that Job, Job was discussing with his friend. He said, as surely as God lives, who has denied me justice, the Almighty, who has made my life bitter, as long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say anything wicked, and my tongue will not utter lies. I will never admit you're, you are in the right. Till I die, I will not deny my integrity. I will maintain my innocence and never let go of it. My conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. May my enemy be like the wicked, my adversary like the unjust. For what hope have the godless when they are cut off, when God take away their life? This is the discourse come from a mouth of a person who has went through such a severe trial in his life. He never want to lose his integrity in Christ. In the epistle of John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 to 21, Apostle John exhorted us, as, he said, Dear children, let, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. And hear what John specifically said. He said, if my heart, or he said, if our heart does not condemn us, do not condemn us. We know that God is greater than our hearts. And he knows everything. He said, dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Even though sometimes our conscience might be not quite accurate, but as leaders, when we lead with a clear conscience, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have the confidence before God. Our clear conscience obviously sometimes does not make us innocent because only God is our judge. There's a time people accusing Paul was all sorts of things. This is how Paul said in his epistle to the Corinthians. He said, I care very little if I am judged by you or any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself, he said. My conscience is clear, he said. But that does not make me innocent. He admit, even though his conscience is clear, but that doesn't mean that because by saying that he's innocent, because he knows the Lord is the ultimate judge. He said, it is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord's come. He will bring to the light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. You see, the eyes of the Lord ranging over the earth. He wants to show himself powerful, those who sat are fully aligned with him. God knows his people. So sometimes you don't have to explain yourself now. But when we come, to the beam of of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. He alone will be our best judge. So we've got to be careful and do not go beyond what is written. And we got to be careful about, you know, overconfidence in our own conscience. But we know as long as we live a clear conscience and we do we do what the best, what the Spirit leads us. We know the Lord is always just. 
he's our best he's our best judge so leave it to god first corinthians chapter 1 verse 12 no sorry second corinthians the second epistle paul said that now this is our boast he said our conscience testified that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and with godly sincerity we have done so but relying not on the worldly wisdom but on great god's grace so we know god's grace uh, is more than our uh, uh, is is greater than our um, our as trespasses, we know the grace of God is sufficient for us. So how do we maintain a pure heart so that we can keep a clear conscience as a leader, as an inner team? The Lord will help those who are honest with Him to live out a clear conscience. As I said before, Second uh, Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, the eyes of the Lord ranging over the earth and he wants to show himself powerful those for those who are fully aligned or fully committed to him. God knows our hearts. Psalms 33 verse 15, he said, He who forms the hearts of all, who consider everything they do. You see, everything lay bare. All creations lay bare before him. He searched everything. The Lord knows about everything. So we don't worry. We know the Lord will help us. And He will help us to keep a pure heart. I like uh, Psalms 84, 11, one of my favorite verses. He said, For the Lord God is the sun and shoe. The Lord bestow favor and honor. No good things does He withhold from those whose work is blameless. If we truly living a blameless life, we know the Lord honors those who honor Him. So we must walk in the light. When we walk in the light, as He is the light, our conscience is clean by the blood of Christ. Sometimes people thought sanctification is by hiding in the cave no you don't hide in a cave and pray alone to be sanctified you sanctify by fellowshipping with all your brothers and sisters it's only when you live in the community you you know you're expressing that love so as we walk in the light as he is in the light when we are walking in moment by moment in obedience to his light the truth of his words then our conscience is cleansed by the blood of Christ. And this is verified by his uh, first John, the epistle, uh, chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, we fellowship with one another, the blood of Christ will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our personal obedience to God is a prerequisite to leading others in obedience to Christ. If you want to lead a team, you love the team to be in obedience to our God, you have to be obedient first. So therefore, if we claim to have fellowship with God and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. So help us. May the Lord help us. And we know that we as His church the Lord want to make us holy and cleansing His church by the washing of the water through the Word and to present her to Himself, to Christ, as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. Finally, pure heart is determined to be a disciple who pray with a pure heart, the Lord will give us a pure heart and our right spirit. In a summon amount, the beatitude, one of the blessings is blessed are the pure in heart. 
Those who are pure in heart, because they will see God. Because without holiness, no one can see God. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14, he said, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. And without holiness, no one can see the Lord. Who may ascend the mountain of God? Who may stand in his holy place? Only the one with clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. So we know, you know, we need to be set us uh, apart for God. We know when after uh, David have sinned, he prayed, he repented, and he prayed. One of his um, most famous um, psalms about that repentance prayer. And he was praying, he said, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He know what an agony he was in when he refused to repent. Let us have repentance about aligning ourselves with God. You know, until we are aligning with God, become holy vessels, we cannot be a great use by God. We are the vessel of God. We are blessed to be a blessings. In a large house, there are articles of gold and silver and also of wood and clay. Some are for special purpose. Some are for common use. And Paul said that those who claim themselves from the letter will be an instrument for special purpose. You see, we are God chosen people. We are special, a special generations, the royal priesthood. We have been made holy and useful for the master to prepare to do all the good works. So we must flee from the evil desires of our youth and pursue righteousness and faith, love and peace along with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. So keeping a clear conscience, remember three things. Sincere faith, prophetically. Kingship is to strive for good. And the priesthood aspect is to ask the Lord to have a clear, a pure heart and clean hands. So let's pray. Father, we Thank you for your precious word, which is like a double-edged sword that can quicken our spirit. It's like a double-edged sword that judges the attitudes of my heart. Help us, Lord, as leaders, especially among our GJ, help us to lead with a clear conscience before God and before man. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen.